Hello, one day. It's Thursday, May 12, 2022. This is the week in charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to attend. I know there's a lot going on these days, seems like. So thank you so much. All right, we're going to talk about, well, obviously, current market conditions. I have a lot to say about that. I'm kind of anxious to get to the charts. And there's a few charts we'll get to before we get to the live charts. But uh, lots and lots to talk about. Obviously, your questions are trading. If you don't mind, keep them relative to the slides, and we'll get to the live charts. Feel free to ask about anything you want. Also, if you're watching the recording of this on YouTube and you want to participate live, ask questions about stocks and things like that, because it usually takes about a half a day to get it loaded after the live shows. Feel free to uh, come to the live shows. In fact, I'd love to have you here participating live uh crypto well not too much excitement in crypto but i will we will jump into the crypto charts there's there are a few things i want to show you there so what are you talking about well it's kind of a potpourri of things and they're all a little bit related i want to talk about uh, say hello to your little friend and that'll make a lot more sense in a few minutes actually toward the end of the presentation conservative investments big question mark there alternative investments and uh, I think probably most importantly, avoiding the next debacle. And I would never be like I told you so, but I kind of feel like I've been setting everybody up for a potential debacle for a long, long time. Not that I was bearish. I was actually bullish when I did a presentation way last summer on market timing, and the market was actually making all-time highs. Anyway, I'll touch upon that in just a minute. Before we do all that, obviously, you can lose money trading. There's a disclaimer screen. Or as I'll often sum it up, all predictions about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right. This is a new segment I call Shit Happens. <laughs> How eloquent is that? So, a buddy of mine, he's also a client. He was day trading this stock. I'm not sure why. This might be one of his old favorites or something. But anyway, he said, well, guess what I did? We were having a little confession time. He said he held 100 shares of this overnight. And I'm guessing with only 100 shares on, he was probably thinking, and in, if you're watching, I'm not trying to beat you up. I just want to, it's a good lesson for all of us because we've, we've all been here and we've all done that. Believe me. <laughs> Anyway, laugh to keep from crying. Well, I'm guessing he was thinking, what's the worst could happen, right? His day trade obviously didn't work out because he closed on the lows and he took it home. And I guess he was thinking, well, maybe it'll pop tomorrow. And I think we've all been a little guilty of this here and there. But again, if he's thinking, what's the worst could happen? Well, the worst could happen is it drops 50 points overnight, as this one did. Now, Here's another interesting situation that occurred last week. If you look at the UST compared to the US dollar, UST is one of those, what do they call those things? Um, token coins or peg coins or dollar coins or stable coin is the word I think I'm looking for. And I don't pretend to know a lot about crypto, but I do know a lot about buying things that go up and selling things that go down. Anyway, in this particular case, this is one that I normally don't keep on my screen because it might go up or down a penny, but usually the US dollar to the UST are normally right about the same. And they're, they're, they're sort of pegged. And I think that's what a lot of people actually thought. They were truly pegged, but they're not actually pegged. But anyway, as you can see, this relationship went from one to one, as it always is, to much less than one to one, maybe one to five, when it was down there at about 20 cents. And that caused a huge debacle in Luna, which is one of the shit coins, S-H-Y-T coins. And as you can see, it went from... Well, longer term, it went from 122, but in more recent times, it went from about 100 bucks down to less than a penny. And I saw somewhere on the internet, excuse me, that um, someone had lost, personally lost $2.8 million just by hanging on 
to this thing. And we're going to revisit this in a little while. And this is what's known, obviously, as a black swan. As I often tell people, especially if they're a little bit newer to trading, just because something has never happened to you doesn't mean that it can't happen. And I'm going to touch upon quite a few th few of these things in a little while. But essentially, if you go in and look at the markets in the 20s when they lost 90% of their value, or even the NASDAQ, as I often preach, and I couldn't find the slide on the fly. One day I need to just sit down and, and figure out what I have. I've got 20 years of material out there, so I don't reinvent the wheel so much. But anyway, I do have a slide where where I show the NASDAQ down 50%, and it seems like, hey, that's on sale, that's cheap. And as I've said before, I've been in seminars where I'm speaking, and the speaker before me was, from what I could tell, suggesting that you sell puts whenever a market is down 50%. And I'm thinking, well, that'll work until it don't, and it would not have worked too well in the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ was down 50%, and then it lost another 55%, if memory serves down 77% total back in 2000. Now we'll come back to that Luna thing and I'll show you a couple of things. Now, the question is what about alternative investments or conservative investments? And I'm gonna, when we do the sector analysis a little while, you'll see that a lot of sectors haven't done so well as of late. I was talking with a friend of mine today and he said that he's also a trader and he said he's got some longer term holdings and he hadn't really paid a lot of attention to them because they're conservative quote investments. And I'm like, oh geez, plot TLT, which is the bond fund and take a look at that. About, I guess it was right around the pandemic time, a relative of mine contacted me in a bit of a panic. And she told her broker that she wanted to go into conservative investments. And he kind of spread her around and a whole bunch of stuff. And all of that stuff went down 30 to 40 percent with the overall market. And obviously, those investments weren't conservative. Now, as an alternative investment, let's take a look at Bitcoin. And I grabbed the true USD. It's probably a better, this one looks like it's got some extra tails in it. But as you can see, it was up at what, 70,000? And now it's at 27,000 on the Bitcoin. So obviously, and that's one thing that's been a bit of a bummer. And I did a presentation a few weeks back where I overlaid the S&P 500 in Bitcoin. And they look like they're about 100% correlated for the most part. So kind of no place to run, no place to hide. You can see Bitcoin remains in a downtrend. I'll come back to Bitcoin in a minute. Now, I wanted to throw this ARK Innovation Fund in here. I've been kind of fascinated with this. And I've seen this thing before. I've never knew what it was. And you guys were talking about it in the Facebook group and like this thing's down 80%. And so I began to check it out a little bit. And this is the one where they use Apple as cash, which I think is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in Dumbtown. <laughs> you know, cash is cash. Apple is not cash. And we'll pull up Apple if uh, one of you guys or girls wouldn't mind reminding me when we get to the live charts, we'll take a look at it. But here's something that's lost 80% of its value going after these innovative growth stocks, right? Although I heard they're they're dumping, they're selling all their Tesla, half a billion dollars worth of, of it or something stupid, and buying GM. And I guess they're giving up on electric cars and want to go back to mostly internal combustion engines. It's like, I don't know, but I digress. Anyway, I just want to show that, and it's been a pretty serious downtrend as you can see, and so far it looks pretty relentless. It doesn't look like it's gonna end anytime soon, down another 10% today. Now, what about like real estate? Well, one of my, well, it's actually my brother-in-law was asking me a couple of days ago, he's like, well, you gotta do something with the cash. You gotta do something with the cash. And I'm like, you know, I wrote an article a while back called Cash Is Not Trash. And by the way, if you look at my website, 
in the top menu right now I have bear market updates and a lot of these presentations are all under that bear market updates. I put a little tag every time there's something related to the situation in the market. Not the situation in Nigeria though. <laughs> anyway, so here's real estate. As you can see, real estate has pretty much imploded as of late. And one thing I'm kind of hinting at is that we are in a bit of a liquidation type of market where bonds are going down, gold's going down, and stocks are going down, obviously. And then, of course, Bitcoin, too, is going down. Now, I just Googled conservative funds, and then I texted my friend slash client and asked him if he could give me a couple of names of the funds that he's in or his wife was in, whatever the case may be, because I wanted to take a look at those, too. And I didn't have time to figure it out before the presentation because I, I upgraded to the new improved uh, telechart, which has been out for 10 years. <laughs> and I lost the watch list that I had that had those funds that were an absolute debacle that this broker puts someone in, my someone close to me, <laughs> into right before the slide. You know, it's weird. Friends and family, they have no idea what I do. You know, it's like I keep it a secret to them. They're like, what do you do? Oh, I just I just hide in my little office all day, 12, hour, 12 hours a day, if I'm lucky, <laughs> only 12 hours. And they're like, what are you doing in there? You know, but but it's not a mystery. I tell them what I do. I have a website. I I do presentations like I did last summer because sooner or later, the bomb is going to blow up. And I'll touch upon that in one second. But as you can see, this thing has gone pretty much straight down with the overall market. Now, I was just kind of doing a little mental math on some of these things, and some of these things are only down 10 to 15 percent, and the market's down a little bit more than that, obviously. We'll take a measurement in just one second. But you don't want to go for relative performance. You want to go for absolute performance, and I'll flush that out in a couple of minutes. So here's another one, and these were found just either, these were funds that he or his wife has some longer term holdings in, and the ones, and I forget which ones are which, but until he texted me back, I just Googled conservative funds, and these were some of the first ones that come up, and these were, a lot of cases were advertised through Google advertisement as conservative funds. But here's another one, you can see it's it's going, down significantly about 20 percent as of late and you kind of get the idea here's a jp morgan conservative growth fund well yeah put me in this because it's conservative here's another one schwab market track conservative portfolio don't want to pick on jp morgan or schwab or any of these other people but if you look at these funds that are conservative, they're really not doing that well. So I think it's a bit of a misnomer. And the other thing that I want to talk to my buddy about is that sometimes these, these assets that have held up well, let's say an asset with fundamentals, I know I just said the F word, but let's say they have a lot of cash and they're holding up well and and they have good fundamentals, so to speak. Well, a lot of times those assets can become a source of funds, and the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Yeah, conservative equals bonds, treasuries. Well, maybe if you're in a short-term treasury bond, but we'll take a look at TLT in just a minute. And it's absolutely imploded. And the, and the aforementioned relative, they had put her into some metals, okay? And they imploded. Sometimes metals go up. We were trading metals not long ago because they were going up and energies were going up. But everything they put her in just absolutely imploded and everything went down 30%. I did this presentation back during the pandemic. So if you look uh, at the spike, I'm sure it's out there on YouTube somewhere. So how do you avoid the next disaster? Well, I've been preaching about avoiding the next disaster a year ago, at least, and, and probably 20 years if you go all the way back. But 
But here's some things that you need to wrap your head around. And I know everybody here tonight's a trader. But in case somebody's new to me or new to trend following or new to technical analysis, you just have to know that sooner or later the bomb will blow up. So like I said, last summer as the market's making new highs, that's when I did a presentation on market timing and why you need market timing, obviously. Now, you could be an investor. We're in one stock. We got one little leftover stock we fit in on the long side. We also have one short in the model portfolio. But I think we've been in that one stock for a year and a half, A-R-L-P. And it's performed well, and it's it continues to stay in the por portfolio because it hasn't stopped out. Now, people say, what's your holding period? And I always say 10 years, hopefully much longer. Now, obviously, I might get stopped out in 10 minutes or 10 days, but hopefully, a word's a very dangerous to use, but hopefully through prudent money management, I'll be able to let that stop widen out over time and ride a winner for a long, long time. It doesn't happen that often. It doesn't happen as often as I would like. I'd like to have it happen every day, right? But every now and then, we'll get in one and we'll ride it for a long, long time make 200, 300, 400, and sometimes even 500%. And again, it doesn't happen that often, but it, it seems to happen just often enough to make this trend following thing worthwhile, worthwhile, especially with a hybrid approach, not to digress too far, imagine that. But if you're going in as a pure trend follower, you're gonna have abysmal drawdowns, and I would never be shot on Friday, but if you look at, some of the people, and I'll just pick on the turtles. If you look at the turtles, as there's a saying around here, ain't there no more. There's actually a song, ain't there no more, talking about all the local institutions and and the you know the chorus or whatever. Is, it ain't there no more. So a lot of the turtles ain't there no more. And I don't want to pick on them, and I don't want to take away from what they've done too. They were, I believe, in the right place at the right time. They caught some really great trending markets. But if you try to trade like that all the time with this long 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 term or longer term trend following from a pure standpoint your drawdowns are going to be abysmal and you're only going to be right about 27 percent of the time then that's why i take a hybrid approach to the money management and we take partial profits on the swing trade as you know but you could be an investor investor but just to be a performance-based investor so what does that mean well my definition of technical analysis is just being a performance-based investor. You want to buy stocks that are going up and sell stocks that are going down. And sometimes it could be that simple. And sometimes just that in and of itself can keep you out a, of a tremendous amount of trouble. And it'll also get you out of a bear market before it really materialized, materialized. So, Make sure you have a performance characteristic. For instance, like if we're looking at the TFM 10% system, we're getting long when we're within 10% of the 50-week closing high. Go in and watch last week's presentation on that and go in and watch the Trading Simplified show, which will post on May 13th on DaveLearner.com and also part, post on uh, YouTube. But go to watch those shows. And if you need access to my YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash C slash Dave Landry. Anyway, so technical analysis is basically just being a performance-based investor. And here's one way to wrap your head around, and I know everybody here, their eyes, your eyes are going to glaze over. But one analogy I often use is like being a manager. If you've got four workers that are busting their butt, and one worker that's sitting on his butt who's going to get fired. Well, you tell it to the average person, they look at you like you pooed your pants. It's like, well, the guy's sitting on his butt, duh, implied. But if they buy five stocks, okay, and four of them are going up and one's going down, they're going to sell some of the ones that are going up thinking they're going to stop going up. Well, you wouldn't fire your good workers thinking they're going to quit working, right? But that's exactly what people do a lot of times when it comes to stocks. Now, I say this quite often. I don't know who to give credit to for this. If somebody knows, let me know. I don't know if it's common knowledge or not, if some economist or someone said this. 
what's the how's the saying go? An economist will tell you tomorrow by why what he predicted yesterday didn't come true today. <laughs> An economist actually told me that, or a major a, a professor at economy, economy, a, a economist professor. Anyway, all asset classes will lose 50% or more of their value at some point in your lifetime. As I preach, I've seen about three 50% declines, three or two, two 50% declines in the market, some 30% declines. I've seen gold lose half its value. I've seen Bitcoin lose half its value, as have you. And I've seen a lot of assets lose half their value, go through the commodities, cocoa, lumber. Lumber dropped 50% after it was up a tremendous amount. So if you are gonna be buy and hold, you're going to have to have two things in mind. You're going to have to have an uncle point in mind or be willing to lose 50% or more of your money. Now, I showed Bitcoin early. I'm talking about Bitcoin a little. I have a tiny bit of Bitcoin hodled, okay? And it's the most painful thing I've ever done. <laughs> but I'm willing to just hodl a little bit and, and let the chips fall where they may. And I'm willing to lose at least half of my investment, at least from where I hodled it. But believe me, I, I didn't bet the form on this. And if it if it goes to zero, it's I'm gonna be pissed, but it's not gonna have a major impact on my lifestyle. So always have a performance metric in mind. And again, I touched upon a lot of these things in recent shows, either through stock markets, I'm sorry, uh, stockcharts.com, my trading simplified show, or in the week of charts. Now, do not buy because a market is low. As I said earlier, the NASDAQ seemed really low. I think um, Warren Buffett, one of his claims to fame is that he sold a, a shit ton of puts on uh, the S&P 500 when it was down 50%. And the S&P turned around and went straight back up. Well, you know, good for him. But, but that'll work until it don't. You do that often enough, you can get into a lot of trouble. And then say hello to my little friend. <laughs> and that little friend is the 30 day EMA. And I know you want to party with me, but that's my favorite moving average and has been for quite some time. And if you just pay attention to the Landry light, highs less than the moving average and lows greater than the moving average for uptrends, highs less than the moving average for downtrends. I'm not going to say it's going to work mechanically, but longer term, it's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble. And if you use a little common sense along with it and maybe another pattern or two, it will, you'll probably do okay longer term. You can see we've had a lot, a lot of Landry light during this spill. In fact, we had a lot of Landry light to the downside before this retrace rally in here. Now, the retrace rally, I didn't get super bullish doing this, even though we did have a TFM 10% system, which I didn't realize we did until you guys pointed out to me. We had a TFM 10% buy signal somewhere in here, but the market was already headed lower when that happened. And my big concern, as I've said, at nausea was that this market was gonna rally just enough to fool everybody before it rolled back over. And again, that's something we talked about in other shows. And then on top of that, you had a mountain of overhead supply. So at this point in time, at this high, I was thinking, okay, well, it's only another 2% to get to all time highs. I'm willing to forego that extra 2% before beginning to get a little bullish. And plus, if I had setups coming out of the database that looked fantastic, then yeah, I would I would jump on those setups. And we probably had one or two longs. I try to forget about losing trades as quickly as possible. But we probably had one or two longs during that period that did set up. And we didn't get super aggressive, but we did maybe get, get stopped out on one or two. Now, getting back to my little friend, notice that you had Landry lights for a long time in this stock. It did kiss the moving average, and then it went back to Landry light once again so if you're long a market and you have a lot of landry light unless of course it's going up for a long long time and your stop is so wide it's well below that moving average that's fine okay that's where you position yourself into i don't know where we are at arlp but uh right now i know it's still above the 30 ema we'll take a look at that in, in, in one second 
anyway, you could see that just something simple like that would keep you out of trouble. But as a trend follower, you would never hold a position like this overnight, not to put any salt in my buddy's wounds. But I think that it does make for a good example and a good reminder of what not to do. And believe me, we've all been there and we've all done that. Like my wife says, I, I left a, I think it was when I left a credit card or whatever, a debit card, an ATM machine, and it got sucked back in. When that happened, you know, my wife says, well, you'll do that once. And evidently she must have done the same thing once, especially if you're under a lot of stress, you make these kind of stupid mistakes. And it kind of haunts her that like every time she'll do something stupid, especially if she's done it more than once, I'll say, well, you'll do that once. <laughs> Wives love to be corrected, in case you guys don't know. You guys newly married, just correct them as much as you can. They love that. And again, getting back to the Luna debacle, okay? The Black Swan thing here, 100 bucks to less than a penny. Wow, that's 99.999%, right? Well, back here, it looked pretty good. And I'd be willing to bet, I don't know for a fact, but I'd be willing to bet, probably in this pullback back here, I may have bought a little bit of this and flipped out a little. I don't know. Maybe. I'll go in and look at my trades if anybody cares. But in more recent times, it's been headed lower. You probably think, well, Dave, why are you short? Well, I just, I've been so consumed with the markets lately, other markets, stocks mostly, obviously, that I hadn't really spent a lot of time in Bitcoin or crypto, I should say. <laughs> Old people, everything is Bitcoin. <laughs> anyway, uh, not crypto. But, you know, in hindsight, yeah, that'd have been great to be short this. That'd have been uh, really, really cool. But anyway, the again, the Landry light keep you out of trouble. Trading with the trend will keep you out of a lot of trouble. There's a lot of simple things that'll keep you out of a lot of trouble. Getting back to the Bitcoin, you can see we had Landry light over here, was headed higher. We had mostly Landry light to the downside, headed lower. We did have this choppy period where it went back and forth, but it really didn't perform well enough for me to get too excited about it. And then, of course, we rolled back over and we have mostly Landry light. And again, I don't know if these tails are exaggerated or not, but you can see it never did get above that 30 EMA. So the 30 EMA is your best friend. I think if you were brand spanking new to trading and you never took a trade above the 30 EMA for longs and you never shorted above it for shorts, right? I think you would do okay. At least you would be on the right side of the market. And there's no guarantee in life. And sooner or later, you're going to get burned. That's one of the few things I can guarantee in the markets. But I'd be willing to bet you're going to miss a lot of debacles. Surprises normally, and normally is the key word in that sentence, but surprises normally happen in the direction of the trend. So take Netflix, for example, because that's one, another one of those debacle du jours that we've been looking at lately as a debacle. It sold off really hard it, it gapped down and then had another huge gap down. But guess what? You had lots and lots of Landry light and it was already in a downtrend when these things happened. So Netflix and ARLP, remind me of those. All right. Uh, lately, I've been saying somebody, you got to be careful with social media, right? <laughs> somebody was calling me out saying, you're just showing the good trades. Well, I show losing trades too. I said, but how about, how about this? How about I show the next 100 trades. And, and here's the other thing, too, I was thinking about, too. With the losing trades, there's really nothing to do other than, well, here's here's a losing trade. Here was, here's my stop. It hit my stop. got knocked out, okay? It happens, right? It's been a little silent SH. I guess I've already demonetized, so shit happens, right? So the thing about a winning trade is is a little bit more management you got to take partial profits you got to raise the stop you got to let that stop widen out i think there's a lot more to teach you from a winning trade standpoint plus with a winning trade provided it it was a really good setup which obviously in most cases it will be if it's a big winning trade it probably was a pretty good setup to begin with there's a lot more to learn from that and of course with a losing trade sometimes Sometimes it just don't work out, even if it's a if it's a perfect setup. 
and learning to live with that is key. But anyway, um, I almost took the slide out because I don't have any new position trades to show you. I've been doing way too much intraday trading, and that's that seems to be like a like rounders lately. What's a poker term when they, you just uh, you know you make the money and then you give it up and just goes around the table? That's what it seems like it's it's been lately. Okay, we'll pull up the crypto real quick. I want to show you my little friend there. And before we do that, just real quick, I know everybody here is in Facebook, but trading can be a really lonely sport. Believe me, I have a lot of ups and downs like everybody else and anybody else with a pulse, right? But the great thing about the trading group, Dave Landry's Trend Traders, is you can interact with the other traders and I'm, I'm active there too. You can ask for help. I lurk a lot too. I, I, I read, I try to make sure I read everything that gets posted and reply when necessary. And if there's an ogre, opening gap reversal or something like that, I'll throw out the signs and signals every now and then. And of course, again, ogres and IPOs and things like that every now and then we throw those out. So let's do this real quick. Let's shift gears. Let's take a look at, at crypto. And then if you guys want to ask about any crypto pairs, feel free to do so now. George says, hey, George, liquidification. Yes, definitely some sort of liquidation market happening. We'll get to the live charts. We'll take a look at some of those things. So here's Bitcoin. Let's see if this was a little cleaner. Yeah, this was a little cleaner. This is USDT. By the way, this is kind of scary, too. I, it, I have all these these articles in my head and everything, and and I wish I would have written it a year ago when I thought about it. But one of the things I was going to write about is this USDT thing is supposed to be tied to the to the U.S. dollar, sort of, and it's supposed to be dollar backed, and it, it's sort of dollar backed. And if you watch the videos on this, it'll scare the mess out of you. So. I wouldn't I wouldn't put a ton of money into the the USDT but if you're going to trade some of these really shitty shit coins and use like an offshore exchange like KuCoin you're going to have to use the USDT but that that does scare the bejesus out of me and one day it'll probably end badly and it's interesting that UST blew up first so hopefully but that could be a harbinger. Hopefully not, but we'll see. So as you go through these, and I just put them in alphabetical order, pay attention to the the downside Landry light and pay attention to that 30 EMA. And what did I say earlier? Don't buy anything unless it's above the 30 EMA, at least as your first criteria. And you can see so far, just going alphabetically, which will give you a little bit random order, right? Not one of these shit coins has been above the 30 EMA. By the way, if you want me to pull one up and look at something for you, I'd be happy to do so. But she, again, coin after coin, token after token, or below the 30 EMA. So that in and of itself, can really keep you out of a lot of trouble. Now, it's oversimplifying a little bit. You don't just buy them and the cross is above, but you'd be much better off not buying it if it doesn't cross above. So you kind of see the idea. But look at how many of these things are in downtrends and just something as simple, it just amazes me. I know I'm a nerd, but it amazes me how Something as simple as a 30 EMA can keep you on the right side of the market. Look at that pair after pair after pair after pair. And you know, one thing that's kind of flat fascinating is if you sort by the strongest ones, I was doing this earlier. Most of the strong ones, I was just kind of pushing above a little bit, but most of even the strongest ones, you can see, now this is just on a one-day relative strength, but a while back, you did the scan, especially last fall, and you would have pair after pair after pair going straight up. In a lot of cases, as I've said before, you could just buy the strong ones. 
But right now, we're not in that kind of market. I would not buy the relative performance. I would buy absolute performance. And that's something that's going up. Wrap, Bitcoin, Ethereum. That's one of those. I, I wouldn't mess with that. But maybe Bitcoin versus Ethereum could be something to look at. Kind of interesting. Uh, Ethereum tanked and then it, it recovered a little bit, at least relative to Bitcoin. Anyway, I think you get the idea by now. If not, then um, <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's take a look at the overall market. And you know what? Let's just let's go to ACP just for a second here. And just pull up some things with Landry Light. So TLT is what I was telling the gentleman earlier. And you know, let's say you're in a longer term bond fund. Well, that would be a bad investment, right? Because why? Well, it's going down. Okay. So bonds have lost nearly what's that? 50% of the value or 40% of the value based on the TLT. So Craig says conservative equal bonds slash treasuries. What did they do? Uh, what's the question, Craig? Can you rephrase that a little bit? But that's the first thing I showed him is the fact that the TLT is headed lower. And that's what happened with this relative of mine. They put her in some of these bond funds and diversified bonds or whatever, well, they all went down too. And that's a liquidation type of market. I need to close my curtains. They're digging a pool next door and there's three little kids who are looking at the hole. <laughs> yeah, they sold off, Craig, you're right. You know, Craig's point is that these things have headed lower and, and they are headed lower. So that's a TLT. And let's just for S and G's, Let's throw the Landry light in. Okay, let's go Landry light. And red is bad, right? Okay, look how much red we've had in here. A couple little kisses. But it's G, you know, once a trend gets moving, now I know there's choppy times, but there's value in, in green, red, green, red, green, red, red, green, red, easy for me to say. Especially if you draw a horizontal line when that occurs and say, well, wait a minute, we're just stuck at a little range, okay? But if you see lots and lots and lots of red, meaning that the highs are less than the moving average, right? In one little kiss like we had here. In fact, by the way, that's what I call a Landry Light pullback. You could actually look to trade those pullbacks into those into the moving average. But if all you did was pay attention to red and green, I mean, you're well on your way. I know it's a lot easier said than done, but it could happen and it could work. Now let's uh let me just pull up ARLP just for S and G's. So here's one we've been in since right there. Oh, look at that. Land your light pullback. Ha, huh, how cool is that? Nerd mode. <laughs> look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Wow, look at that. Look at that trend. It's huge. Okay, so you've got this nice. You got a major low in this thing, okay? Kind of a cup and handle type of bottom. You got all this Landry light and you got to pull back to that EMA. I didn't even realize that was a Landry light pullback, okay? So what's the rule? Don't buy anything unless it's above the EMA. So I did go a little bit below it, but it was in such a great trend and we had all this green, okay? And so I think we entered about 489 if memory serves. So this is the case where We've hung out for a long, long, long time. Now, what did I say earlier? It's like, okay, don't buy anything unless it's above the 30 EMA, and you might want to look stuff, look sell, look to sell stuff when it's below. But Dave, it was below over here. It's like, well, okay, it was green for a long time. You're right, but we already took partial profits, and then we put in a longer term. We had a longer term widening trailing stop. Now, those widening trailing stops over time will begin to look like a longer term moving average with the exception that they won't get any closer to the chart when the chart just goes sideways so let's just for s and g's do a, a 50 and 200 day okay so the 200 day 200 day landry light has not been touched in a long 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 time okay and the 50 day we only had little kisses we did have a little downside right here 
But for the most part, we've had a lot, a lot of outside laryngeal bite. So again, your stop begins to widen out and starts looking similar to, let's say, like a 200-day moving average, although it might not be that far away, it depends on the case. Then, you know, you don't get too excited about the short-term action because then you kind of become a little bit more longer term oriented in the position and it's a performance based position right so you just wait for unfortunately which will eventually happen you wait for that stop to get hit okay so on a weekly chart you can see all green with the 50 and then the 200 moving average which would be 200 weeks in this case just was flat line so that doesn't really tell you a whole lot but the 50 week was kind of cool in this case TLT is due for a bounce and I would use, but I'd use that to buy TBT. Ah, TBT is the inverse. The only problem with anything that's inverse, as I think most of you people know, is eventually they go to zero. So that's the only thing you really have to worry about if you're going to. Not the only thing, there's always something to worry about. But uh, be careful if you're going to hold these longer terms because eventually, especially like if you show them unsplit adjusted or whatever. I'm trying to think of one like uh, like Lab D would probably be Lab D, no Lab U, L A B, no nope, Lab D. Let's see, making a liar out of me. Yeah, so this was at twenty two thousand, as you can see. Okay, now it it has come back, but yeah, twenty something thousand. All of these things will eventually go to zero because they're just tracking the day over day change and there's kind of like a reverse martingale thing that happens because if you have an up day i'm sorry if you have a big down day in the market they end up with cash and then they have to invest that cash tomorrow and they keep doing that and eventually it just makes them go to zero there's probably a, a better way or more eloquent way of explaining it but you get the idea all right let's hop into the let's take a look at the overall market and drill down to a sector or two and you guys want to look at it i know we talk about stocks all day in, in facebook but there's any things that you guys want to any stocks you want to look at start asking about them now all right here's the peas okay we did have a little bit of a gap this morning and lately the market's been choppy but for the most part it has headed lower as you can see just out of curiosity peak to trough where are we Excuse me. Um, we're down about 20%, okay, from the highs. And a lot of those conservative funds were only down 13, 14, and 15%. So if you lose 15% or even just 10%, you're still losing 10%, right? It's not like you're like, oh, well, the SAP lost 20%, so I'm doing better. It's like, no, no, you're not doing better. You're doing bad or <laughs> doing badly so there's no there's no good longer term investment unless of course it goes up once you're in it nasdaq boy that's looking pretty ugly huh peak to trough let's see what we got 31 percent okay and that's just that's the ugly my big concern as i've been telling my peeps is a couple things you go back in time all the way to last fall. Right now, I guess you go technically all the way to last summer. I'm sorry, two years ago, summer of 20, summer two, 2020. Let me just do that again. Summer 2020, right? Yeah, go all the way back to August or July of 2020, okay? And let's say you bought the NASDAQ back then around 12,000 round numbers or 11.5 round numbers and then you wait two years and now you're barely breaking even if that so that's going to put a little pressure on people and anybody who bought the nasdaq above this level here if this thing continues to drop they're going to be there's going to be more and more pressure put on them to sell gold gold hasn't done that well since the peak obviously this is gold the commodity so it's down 12% from the peak. That's a pretty big move in gold. The rusty, ugh, rusty looks pretty ugly. And that's been saying a nauseam. If we take out this re these recent lows with vigor, it's got a long ways to go. 
the one thing that had me concerned was all this overhead supply and look what it did i mean that's almost textbook right it doesn't always work that perfectly but notice that it, it rallied just enough to get that overhead supply and then it imploded energies look pretty darn good longer term shorter term though you can see they have lost a little steam so i'm gonna have to keep an eye on that i'm actually seeing a few shorts in energies i'm not going after them just yet but my hand might be forced fairly soon for now i'm still slightly bullish on the energies i'd rather go long than short but we'll see what happens metals and mining different story they rolled over they formed a bow tie down recently let's see if i can get a bow tie in here yeah as you can see bow tie down that triggered and technically i guess if you're following it mechanically it would have triggered right here so it had a pretty big slide since that bow tie about 11 percent which is pretty big for metals and mining but you can see it's not looking so hot in here one thing i was telling my peeps tonight is hey look at consumer non-durables right because in a bear market you still need those non-durables okay durables i don't know why i'm calling that but you can see they're not doing so hot in here automotive looking pretty ugly you could just kind of throw a dart anything financial related banks financials themselves insurance just not looking so hot a lot of these areas hitting multi-year lows here's real estate again you can see no place to run no place to hide bit of a liquidation kind of market now we are severely oversold but as i often preach <laughs> it's always darkest right before it gets more dark use the oversold condition if you want to play an intraday bounce uh i would caution you though and, and you know guilty be careful when you're looking at those bars because that looks like a huge bar on like a 15 minute bar but it might not be that big of a deal on a daily chart so if you're going in to kind of try to catch an intraday bounce be super careful with that i think tomorrow's gonna be really interesting nice little opening gap reversal in healthcare, but boy health services not looking so hot i mean the list goes on and on defense you know you would think oh defense would be great right now we've got some wars in the world right well, nope, it's begun to implode to manufacturing, banging out new lows, MNC, right at these multi-year lows. Leisure has been abysmal. Retail, again, multi-year lows. Just draw your arrows, pay attention to your bow tie, moving, moving uh, uh, proper order. Proper order meaning downtrend would be 10, less than 20, less than 30, okay? For downtrends, software, pretty ugly, banging out new lows. Semiconductors again not pretty right okay so i think that's i think that's pretty much it uh as far as the market is concerned it's it's, it's ugly out there seeing your hands is 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 a good thing to do as, as i said tonight's service and i'm sure it was kind of a joke but mr buffett allegedly paid somebody a hundred thousand dollars a year I'm, I'm sure it really didn't happen but let's just pretend that it did and what would the world be without hypothetical questions right Mr. Wright with a W, but he allegedly paid somebody $100,000 a year so he would never buy another airline, right? Well, you lose hundreds of millions of dollars on an airline. <laughs> so 100K a year would probably not be a whole lot to spend <laughs> to do that. But anyway, the point I'm trying to get to is that in the service, I told everybody tonight, it's like, why would you pay somebody to tell you not to do anything? It's like, well, because doing something will get you into a lot of trouble. And I stopped short of saying, compare what you did to doing nothing lately. And I think that's okay thing to say. So compare what you're doing now to doing nothing and, and see how you do. And I was trying to explain to two of my friends because they, they're so worried about cash. Like, oh, can't sit on cash, right? And it's like, well, sometimes return of capital is more important than, than chasing return on capital. Okay, any any stocks you guys want to look at? Gone once, gone twice. All right, short and sweet tonight. Fantastic. Anything unanswered? You know the routine. Bring it up at Facebook so we all can kind of noodle with a little bit. If you're not in Facebook, then why not? Uh, <laughs> you can reach me at DaveLander.com slash contact. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. If we don't talk to you now and then, and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.